You know, sometimes I wonder if we're ever going to get it right. If we're ever going to treat each other with respect and dignity. I wonder if we're ever going to stop hurting one another. As a man, I've always respected strength. A smart and confident woman is sexy. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and following this podcast. This week, my dear friend, Coach Claudette, is back to talk about selfishness, the power of it, the joy of it. And this episode, ladies, is dedicated to you. If I died tonight, too many of us are seeking help. Too many feel alone and don't believe help is available. And that despair leaves one in five to think about suicide. And it's not the answer. This is the podcast of hope, wisdom, and shared life experiences. Welcome. Hi, I'm Reverend Kim Blanchard. And again, thank you for being here. This week, I'm hoping something is said that makes you go, ah, never thought of it that way. Coach, welcome back. Thank you. It's so good to be back with you. I'm excited about our talk today. So am I. You kind of <laughs> teased it a little bit. You said uh, the joy of being selfish, I think, was something close to that. Yes. And I thought, selfish? That's a That's never been used in a positive way, I thought. But, but help me, help me out here with this. How, okay. can we, how can we get better? How can we take care of ourselves? How can we experience the joy of being selfish? So, you know, I will start by giving you the definition. Oh, okay. So the definition of selfish is regard for self. That's all. Regard oh. for self. And the opposite of selfish is selfless. And what does selfless mean? Regard for others, regard for everyone except self. So if you are thinking about everyone except yourself, who is thinking about you? Yeah, that happens a lot, actually. Yeah. Especially and, especially for women. I think you guys get abused because um, we just assume you're supposed to do that. You, you don't even have a choice, but you do. And, and that, and that is so untrue, you know, because when I talk about the joys of selfishness, I equate that to self-care. So if you don't stop for a moment to take care of yourself, if you don't recognize that you're tired, that you need some downtime, no one else is going to recognize that for you. Amen. And so that's my idea of being selfish to say, Hey, wait a minute. You know, I have been running for days, for months, for years. Yes, yes, <laughs> um, nonstop. And I just need a break. Helping I everybody need, else out. Right, right. Because like you said, women are expected to do that. They're expected to be that strength and to carry the family. But and we don't we don't give you no accolades, we don't give you no breaks. We just we just assume it's supposed to happen. Yep. Mm -hmm, yep, that's exactly right. We just assume. And so I can remember having this talk because, as you said, women are usually the ones that are getting the short end of the stick. And so I usually have this talk with women because I want them to understand how important being selfish is to their well-being. And <clears throat> so I was having this conversation one night and this woman in the audience, she was huffing and puffing. She says, hmm, she doesn't know what she's talking about being selfish. That's not good. Oh, nobody, wow. nobody should be selfish. And, and I'm listening to her mumble, you know, <laughs> and, but I don't say anything. I continue on with my talk. Right. And after the talk is over, you know, we're mingling and, and I overheard her having a conversation with another participant saying, Oh, I have to go because I have to go to the store and pick up some things for my mom. And then I have to take it to my mom. And she was just, and I could tell like the angst in her voice and in her whole being that this was absolutely not how she wanted to spend her evening. Yeah. And so I says to her, so I said, excuse me, I'm, I don't mean to eavesdrop, but I heard you talking about having to go to your, to the store for your mom or run some errands for your mom. And I can hear the angst in your voice and I can feel it in your energy. And so if I, a stranger, can feel how much you don't want to do this, 
imagine how your mom's going to feel when you get there with whatever it is that you're picking up for her and you go in with attitude. Well, she was not happy to hear that because she went on to say, (laughs) you know, that I didn't know anything about responsibilities and she couldn't just not serve her mom. And she just went off on me a little bit, you know? And so I said to her, I says, listen, I said, I do understand about responsibilities. I said, and I'm not saying don't serve your mom. What I'm asking you to do is not serve her in this state of being where you are right now, because your mom's going to feel that like, you know, she's going to say, if nothing else, because mothers know, if nothing else, she's going to say, baby, what's wrong? Mm. She's going to feel that you don't want to be there, that you don't want to do this for her. And is that how you want your mother to feel like she's a burden to you? No. Oh, my goodness. Nobody wants to feel that way. Not your children and definitely not your your parents. And so how do we serve them with love? How do we serve them with peace and compassion and understanding by, by knowing that we have to fill our cups before we can share someone else with someone else yeah it's like you you know you get on the airline and they say put your oxygen mask on before you help another i know right being selfish is a part of putting your oxygen mask on first because if you can't breathe you surely can't help someone else breathe you made me think about how many times we do stuff that we think we're just doing it but the way we're doing it or the attitude kind of counteracts that whole positive thing we thought we were doing Mm mm-hmm yep so so just so just imagine that you're you're one of your young people because they're not children anymore. I know right? um, that they that that they come up, that you ask them to pick you up to pick up your prescription from the drugstore and they go pick up your prescription and they bring it in the house and they throw it across the room to you. No. Yeah, that ain't going over too well. Right. So then that's what you're doing. When you are so exhausted that you're feeling the sense of obligation to serve someone when you don't have it in you. Mm. Like, I need to take care of myself so that I am better able to take care of others. So here, here's another example. I'm going go to I'm gonna go to food first. And then I'm going to go to the guys because, see, the guys think that, oh, this is what we're supposed to do. And they don't understand when we say, when we say oh, I don't want to do this. I need to do this for me. And, oh, you're being selfish. No, I'm not being selfish. I'm just taking care of me. So let me give you an example of food. I love, as you know, I love to cook. Mm-hmm. And I love to cook what I feel like cooking. So as an example, I was preparing to, I was preparing to to cook dinner and I had in my mind, this is what I want. This is what I have a a taste for. So let's say for instance, I have a taste for a steak and some potatoes. And so my partner comes in and he says, oh, I don't want that. I have a taste for some spaghetti. Hmm. Okay. Well, I won't make my steak and potatoes. I'll make your spaghetti because that's what you want. But I really want to have the steak and potatoes. No problem. So I make the spaghetti and he says something like, oh, why does it taste like this? Oh, this is not what I have in mind, what I had in mind. Oh, did you do something else with the sauce this time? It doesn't taste the same. So what happens in that? What happens (laughs) in that instant? In that instant is he's not happy with the way it was prepared and I'm not happy because it's not what I wanted to eat in the first place. And now you don't even like it. So what does that mean? He's upset. I'm upset. Where's the love and joy in that? Where's the, where's the love and joy in that meal and that experience? There is none. So, so if I had continued to make the steak and potatoes that I wanted, it would be made with love and attention and passion because that's what I wanted. And so if that's what I want and that's what I choose to fix, 
whoever I'm serving can't help but enjoy it because I prepared it with love. I like that. So every now and then we have to say, no, I'm not going to do this. I am going to do what works for me. And so when I look at, when I look at the guys, very rare, not to say it doesn't happen, but it's very rare that a man goes to his wife or his partner and says, can I go watch the game with the boys tonight? Usually they say, oh, I'm going with the boys. We're watching a game. Hmm. Or I'm going with the boys to the bar or whatever it is that he's doing because no one told a man that he needs to ask permission. So why do women have to ask permission? True. So I think it's time for us all, particularly women, to recognize the joy in being selfish because the other side of that is when we are happy, the world around us is happy. Like, so if I am sitting there, and you can even think about this with the women in your life, if a woman in your life is unhappy, then you are concerned about her unhappiness. If you care for her, right? you're concerned. You say, hey, baby, what's wrong? What can I do to help? How can I, how can I fix this? So if I'm happy, then the world around me is happy. And if the world around me is not happy, I need to change that world. You because, go. you know, it's like if you see me sitting in a corner and I don't look like I'm happy and you don't ask me what's wrong or there's no concern with you about my state of being, then what purpose are you serving in my life? Because in that situation, it seems like it's all about you. And as long as you are happy, then it's all good. Everybody else should be happy too. Man, how many relationships are like that? There's like quite a few. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And folks just exist like that thinking that's the norm. This is yep. what it's supposed to be. And they're miserable. You can see yep. it. Everybody sees it, but them. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're absolutely right. And so I just, you know, I, I, I try to help people, particularly women to recognize that being selfish is not a bad thing. Like, it's really about taking care of yourself and recognizing what you need to be happy. Because when we start thinking about my happiness is dependent upon my spouse, my partner, my children, then we will have a lot of unhappy days. Because it all starts with us. It all starts with me. And there's like a silent pause because my brain is thinking. Uh-huh. Like, I know. That's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> you're like usually on audio stuff, you, you like have to keep talking, but I'm sorry, y'all. I'm actually like in thought. It's like, hmm, how many, how many things have I messed up? I, it gives you a chance to like reflect on uh, relationships that you've messed up on, even conversations you've had recently um, mm-hmm. on how you give things, on how you present things on how you show your time it's a monster uh, it is you it can is. get you can get caught up in your own self and just forget about everybody else and sometimes we need to do that sometimes yes 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 because if i don't know i was having this conversation with a friend just a couple of days ago we were talking about sharing our desires with another <clears throat> it was about um relation relationships intimate relationships and the conversation was about well how do i say what is important to me and what i want to do and we had this whole conversation and then it boiled down to oh well i don't even know what i want so That's if i don't honest, know what though. i want Yes. And if I don't know what I want, how do I tell another what I want? Yeah. And so then, so then, you know, you talk about, you know, we can get into ourselves and, and, and kind of shut everyone else out, but that's what we need to do. We need to get to know ourselves so that we can have better relationships so that we can have simply better interactions with people. Like if you know that, someone talking over you is is a pet peeve of yours 
then you tend to stay away from people who overtalk you rather than always putting yourself in those situations, knowing that Bob always does this. Bob always overtalks anyone who he's talking to. If I know that's a pet peeve, I'm going to limit my time with Bob. Not that I love Bob any less, but I'm going to limit my time with him until I can figure out how not to be, how not to allow that to push my buttons. How do I let that go? Because it's not about Bob. Bob's going to be Bob, but that's all Bob knows how to do is to be Bob. (laughs) This works. This works for family members too. Yes. For for siblings and uncles and aunts and people who are cousins that you just, they've been great in your nerves for your whole life and you let them mess you up. Yes. And and avoided family getting get togethers and avoided travel and avoided so many things just because you didn't let, you didn't let Bob be Bob. I can so relate. Yeah. So can I I. so relate. Like I have, I have people in my life that, in my family who I have cared for immensely and enjoyed them immensely, but because of their husband or their wife or their children, I didn't spend a lot of time with them because I didn't want to deal with the rest of the people, the rest of it, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, now as an adult, I can say, oh, well, I could have handled that a little differently, but as a child and as a younger person, you know, before all this work on me, I didn't know how to, how to handle that and how to do that other than to stay, to stay away from them. Wow. Yeah. It takes us a while to get there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the, one of the reasons why I started off working with girls so many years ago, because I imagine a world where girls learn this as teenagers so that when they become adults, they don't have these issues. And then I remember the labels that they give girls who stand up for themselves. <laughs> yeah, yep. sure do. Sure do. They got a whole list of them. Right. And like, why? Why can't I say what's important to me? Why is it that only you as a guy can say what's important to you. So you and I can walk into a room, you know, like I, and maybe I walk in today and you walk in tomorrow saying the exact same thing in the exact same attitude. And you will be looked at like, Oh, that's just who he is. And he's being assertive. And, you know, this is what he's supposed to do. And I'm being emotional because I'm a woman. Or even worse. That B just said. Yeah. mm -hmm, Yeah. Or even worse. But that yeah. dude just said the same thing yesterday and everybody laughed. Right. Right. Yeah. It took me a while to get that one. It, it was, uh-huh. um, that one I got a little earlier. Um, I started appreciating the contributions of other people faster. Um, cause I'm, I was in the star, star Trek and star Wars and all the science fiction and, and the future movies, the one thing uh-huh. that seemed to be disappearing was the sexism, the racism, the whatever. They were always fighting aliens or something else, but it seemed like the man, the male and female relationship was on on the right chord. And um, mm-hmm. my first hero or heroine was Sigourney Weaver. Mm. I, I have never cheered so much for a lady in my life. That was like the very <laughs> first time. It was way, way back. I was still yes. a teenager. But yes. the, the fact that she lived, her and that doggone cat survived a monster that we had never seen before. I went crazy because I thought, see, they can do stuff. She was smart. She was, uh-huh. and, and I thought, okay, what else am I wrong about? That was like the, that was my eye opening thing. Um, mm-hmm. Folks are going to be looking at me crazy now. They're like alien. Yeah. And that, uh-huh. that was the first time to me in all the movies. Cause I've been a movie kid my whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, all, all my heroes had the white hat and the gun on the side. And the, the fact that now, this lady was not, uh, she didn't have a long dress on. She had, she had short hair. Mm -hmm. Um, she was a leader. She was the captain of this, of this crew. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happened in this movie that it it changed it for me. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and a lot of people, you, um, thought of that as a once in a lifetime experience. So, 
you know, a lot of people may not have felt about her and her role the way you did, because for so often or for so long, and even to this day, they expect a man to be the savior, you know, or the hero. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we, we tend to overlook or downplay the actions of women yeah. um, when women are like awesome and amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, True that. <laughs> I mean, we do it all. And yeah. still we are a lot of times relegated to serving everyone before we serve ourselves. And I, and, and trust me, I understand that some women take on this martyrdom as the thing. Yeah. And I'm not a martyr. That's not why I, I came here. I, I, I think that my purpose is to help other women to realize that we don't have to be martyrs, that we can stand in our own truth and, and, and stand in our power and still be the amazing women that we are without cowering down to some larger force. Um, and I won't even say to men because the larger force is really society. Yeah. It's yeah, really, it's true. you know, like from the beginning of time that yeah. we have had to play this role. But, you know, when I think about that, that leads me to, most women are out working full-time jobs. And so I'm always amazed when I am talking to a woman who is saying, oh, I have to go home and cook and clean and take the children to all of these different activities after she's worked a full-time job. Whereas he, who's also working a full-time job, he works his job and he goes home and sits in front of the TV and pops a beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh. <laughs> right yeah and society rewards him for that tells him yes. it's okay he pats him on the back yes yes and how many women are out here that are up two three four hours after the family has gone to bed because they still have stuff to do to ensure that you know the house is shut down and tomorrow starts without a hitch yeah. So how can how can that mother take time for herself? How can how can she take a step back and say, you know what, today is my selfish day. So um, the children need to figure out what they're going to have for breakfast. Cereal never killed anyone. Um, <laughs> the dad's going to need to, you know, put hockey or football or whatever he is normally does on Saturday on hold or take the children with you because I need a break, too. Like, how do I continue to be the amazing mother that I am if I don't have time to replenish? Selfishness think, equals self-care. And guys miss out on so much stuff, allowing society to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. um, almost all of my, my coaching and my guidance has been to younger guys. And I've said stuff as, as simple as, don't miss out on being a dad. It's more to it than just donating some DNA. Right. There's some work that has to be done. There's some stuff that you can enjoy um, that your kid will go on without you, but you don't want them to have to. I want her to have to. You want to see both of you guys there. And yes. all your craziness goes to your kids. So share it, love it, lean into it. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember one of my friends who was, the most macho guy of all, all of us, he's talk junk. He swear he was a, he was a Marines Marine, but he raised his daughter. And mm -hmm. one time, one time I was coming over his house, he goes, um, you gotta give me a few minutes. I got to finish braiding my daughter's hair. And I almost mm -hmm. fell out. Mm -hmm. And I thought you're braiding her hair. And he's like, yeah, she can't go out. I was looking like this. And I thought, okay, major ups to you, dude. Yes. Yes. There are, there are, amazing dads out in the world who do amazing things without, without mom in the picture, you know, it's just them. And I take my hat off to them also recognizing that, yes, I'm grateful for them stepping up and, and, and doing what they need to do. And who's, who's appreciating the moms because we just think that's what she's supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, 
Yes, I love that fathers are doing that, but like, can you help? A, can you help a mom out too? Right. You know, right. like, how do you like? Someone was sharing with me the other day um, <clears throat> that they were having a conversation with the father um, of their of their children, and he wanted her to send him pictures. And she said, you know, you can come and take your own pictures. And yeah, yeah. she says, I'm not sending pictures. And I says, why won't you send the pictures? She says, because I'll send the, I send the pictures. And then he posts them on Instagram. Like he's this amazing dad who's in his children's life when he's not yeah. like, you yeah. know, what does it say about you that you're not even around enough to get pictures of your children that I have to send you pictures of your children? Too much of that is going on. Right, right. You can do that in jail. So, yeah. So who's who's recognizing who's recognizing mom for all the work that she does? Yeah, I totally agree with that one. Yeah. So I can remember. Um, I have always recognized that I needed time and space to breathe. And I can remember um When my daughter was about three years old, I told her she was going to a a kindergarten preschool. And whenever we came in, I would say, okay, I need 20 minutes. Just give me 20 minutes. And she had no concept of time. So what I started doing was setting a clock, setting an alarm. So the alarm would ring in 20 minutes. And then she could have my undivided attention. But I have worked all day. You've been in school and I know you haven't seen me, but I've been work. I've been working my brain all day and I need to have some time to just breathe and just wind down so that I can be the best possible mom to you. Because of course, if I had a rough day at work, I don't want to come home taking out my frustrations on you. So I take that 20 minutes, I breathe into my evening and into the role of mom And then I'm cool. I'm good to go. So, you know, I had that conversation with my daughter, like, how come you never did that? (laughs) She's like, I don't know, but I surely remember you doing that to me. Yes, because we need this time to wind down. And if we don't take it, nobody's going to give it to us. I mean, there's no, there's no kid as much as we love them. There is no kid that says, mom, when we get in the house, you can have 20 minutes to just do what you want to do. And I'll wait. <laughs> right. Nobody says that. <laughs> Nobody says that. So how about we do that? How about we set something up and we take back our power to say, I need this time, if nothing else, to transition from this role to this role. Let me have that time. What's the benefit? What happens once you do that? Once you get your time? What's some of the pluses that happen after you recharge? So some of the pluses is whatever happened during the day while I was at work does not color my evening, first and foremost. The second thing, it does not impact my relationship with my daughter. Because if I had a bad day at work, I might come in and yelling and screaming at her. And she had nothing to do with that. She doesn't know why I'm upset. And so why should she feel that? you know, if she doesn't even understand it. So those are, those are for me, those were the two major things like to let go of the work day and to not have this, this frustration in me that I end up taking it out on my daughter. And, and the third thing is like, because now I'm fresh and she's fresh, we can play, we can have fun. We can go in the kitchen, we can cook. If she makes a mess, I'm not screaming at her because why? Because I've already let that day go. And now I'm just about being mom. What does it take for me to be mom? Yeah. I I need to be happy. I need to be cheerful. I need to be able to relate to this three-year-old. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the benefits. Because, you know, toddlers can pluck your nerves, your last nerve (laughs) if you let them. (laughs) So we have to be able to prepare ourselves to deal with them because they don't know how to prepare to deal with us. And so as adults, we need to be prepared to deal with them. That sounds so good. All right. We've hit self-care 
and taking care of yourself. Let's just, um, I want to put a pin in this one and maybe come back one more time again in the future um, <laughs> okay. to talk about older people. Um, you just made me remember as we get older, sometimes we have to take care of our parents. Uh-huh. And, um, there's a lot of mental stuff that you have to sometimes get over. Yes. And if you have a question for Coach Claudette or something that would fit into what we're talking about, feel free to contact us, contact her here, and um, I'll pass it on to you. How can folks reach you, uh, Coach Claudette? My website is CoachClaudette.com. I am on all the social media um, outlets as Coach Claudette. And my email address is Claudette at CoachClaudette.com. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Again, I want to thank you. Um, I got to go home to my mom, some stuff. No, you know how you just you think about some stuff like, "Wow, man, I hope I did that right. I didn't um, look like I was obligated to help somebody, or I could be nicer tomorrow." And that's kind of the purpose of this podcast. Yes. I mean, like we we could be talking about a whole bunch of stuff, a lot more sexier, a lot more uh, controversial. But my goal is actually just to help you, and if it helps you, then it's a win for both of us. Love it. I love it. Coach Claudette, thank you for being a guest here on If I Died Tonight. You are awesome, lady, and I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And we'll be back after this message. This podcast is a part of BlanchardNetwork.com. Check it out at BlanchardNetwork.com. If you would like to support this podcast, Go to glow.fm forward slash Ken Blanchard. I want to thank my friend for coming on board and leading the way once again. Dear woman, sometimes you'll just be too much woman, too smart, too beautiful, too strong, too much of something that makes a man feel like less of a man, which will start making you feel like you have to be less of a woman. The biggest mistake that you can make is removing jewels from your crown to make it easier for a man to carry. When this happens, I need you to understand. You do not need a smaller crown. You just need a man with bigger hands. Just in case nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until next week. Shalom, baby. Shalom, baby.